What's up, World 2 family? It's Abraham here again. Uh, I'm here at the Ocean Corporation in Houston, Texas. And in today's video, we're going to answer some questions. We're going to answer how, what does it take to be an underwater welder? What's up, Walter family? I'm here with Richard. I'm going to ask him some questions about what it takes to be an underwater welder. And my first question I have for you, Richard, is uh, what do underwater welders weld? Okay, well, there's a lot of uh, misunderstandings. So you've got offshore, which is usually Gulf of Mexico, and you have inland diving, where they might be working in um, rivers, dams, ships, nuclear power plants, water treatment plants, that kind of thing. Then you got offshore where they're doing everything from um, pipelines, construction on oil and gas platforms, that kind of thing. So there's a couple different areas. Um, usually they're going to be doing stick welding underwater. Um, two types of welding. You have wet, which is basically your diver gets in, just like you guys did in the water welding video, and you weld. And you have dry or hyperbaric welding, which basically you have a habitat and you'll put it over a, typically a pipeline, diver goes down, you blood all the air, diver goes in, pulls off his diving hat, puts on his hood, welds underwater. So those are gonna be your more critical type welds. Okay, um, uh, do those require more time or? Uh... Right, so the hyperbaric, the dry welding, yeah. uh, is typically a lot more expensive. Uh, so it's kind of a last, uh, last thing they're gonna try to do. Your wet welding, your diver jumps in, he's got a stinger, um, it can get after it versus having to manufacture a uh, habitat and everything, put it in place, all that. Cool, cool. My second question I got for you is how much do underwater welders make? Yeah. The big so, one right there. Yeah, well, once uh, a student graduates an accredited diving school, commercial diving school, you know, you can't just be a scuba diver and say I'm an underwater welder. You have to go right. to an accredited commercial diving school. You get out. The pay depends on where you work and how you work. Um, most of our students at the Ocean Corporation, they end up going into the Gulf of Mexico, typically out of South Louisiana. Uh, they're going to be working on your oil and gas type stuff, pipelines and platforms, uh, support stuff, that kind of thing. Um, starting pay, depending on how much time you spend offshore, um, is right out of school is about 50000 And you start out as an, a tender, which is kind of an apprentice, right. and then you work up to being a diver. Once you're a diver, uh, your pay really starts going up more. You get pretty much a day rate, and then once you start diving, everything deeper than 50 feet, you get paid by the foot. The deeper you go, the more money you make. Your deeper stuff, 300 to about 1,000 feet, you know, pays really good, typically anywhere from 800 to about 1,200 a day. So your more experienced divers doing your deeper, more complex style stuff can make, you know, a really good living. Uh, but most of your commercial divers, your underwater welders, you know, they can make a pretty good living um, doing the underwater welding and construction. Nice, nice. My other question is, uh, what training is required? All right, so like I said, you can't just be a scuba diver uh, and take a underwater welding course. So you have to go through a commercial diving program uh, where you'll learn construction, the physics, the, all the stuff that goes into it, mixed gas, underwater welding, underwater burning. Um, you'll have to learn all that. So you actually have to go through an accredited commercial dive school. How long, how long would that take? Um, most of the schools are uh, here at the Ocean Corp, seven and a half months. So they're about six to nine months, depending on the school. Cool, cool. Okay. Um, what prevents someone from being a diver? Um, you have to be in fairly good shape. It's a physically demanding job. Um, preventing uh, things, if you're claustrophobic, you know, you've got a a, a hat on your head so you might be claustrophobic so that's kind of a mental thing physically if you have asthma or if you take medications on a routine basis you know if you're underwater working and you're down for a couple hours and you can't you can't take a pill or take a medication kind of thing so asthma heart conditions or having to take medications on a routine basis right. pretty much disqualify okay where do divers work um, divers work all over the world like I said, you have inland divers working in lakes, rivers, dams, water treatment facilities, nuclear power plants. Um, most of your commercial diving stuff is done in the Gulf of Mexico out of South Louisiana. Um, you know, there's thousands of offshore platforms out there that need to be maintained, they need to be inspected. Um, 
when a hurricane comes through, they'll have divers come in and call a flyby, which basically they'll jump in, do a quick inspection to see if there's any kind of damage. When uh, damage is done, then it needs to be repaired. Right. Um, when a platform stops producing, or if a hurricane actually destroys one, knocks one over, commercial divers go out, pick those things up, remove it, um, and clear the bottom so you don't have any kind of stuff to get caught on anchors or fishing nets. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably related to how much welders make. Uh, I was wondering uh, if, I, uh, if I'm a commercial diver and I get contracted to work outside of the country, would I make more money? But typically what will happen is you're going to get um, – the local dive companies here in the U.S. will get overseas contracts in right. Trinidad, Africa, that kind of thing. Pay is about the same. The difference is you might get a 30-day stint. So if you're going overseas, they're not, you know, they're not going to want to send you for a week and back and forth. Right. So typically you'll go for 30, 45 days. Then you'll send you back, get a break, and go back and forth. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, I have another question. Can females be divers? Sure. We get uh, females come in all the time always joke and uh, laugh about the female divers. They actually do really good um, here in school as well as the ones I've worked with offshore. And I joke with the ladies saying because women like to be in charge. So they <laughs> like everything organized and structured. They do pretty good. Um, you don't have to be a big muscle head gorilla to be a diver. Right. So you gotta be in fairly good shape. Um, everything offshore, the word I use is ginormous. Big heavy stuff out of steel. So you have to use your brain so you can figure out how do I move this big heavy stuff. So rigging, cranes, tuggers, that kind of thing. But yeah, females, um, you know, all the way up through deep water saturation diving, not a problem. Cool, cool. How deep do divers go? Um, pretty much most of your work in the Gulf of Mexico is done in less than 500 feet of water, but occasionally you'll get the deeper stuff, saturation diving, which is up to 1,000 feet underwater. Yeah, that's pretty deep. What is the lifestyle like? Um, lifestyle? Um, it's good and bad. It's got perks, benefits, you know, and then it's got its drawbacks. So lifestyle is you don't have a set schedule. When there's work, you go to work, um, you know, and you stay out when you're busy because that's when you're making your money. So you might go out for a week. You might go out for a month. You might go out for six weeks, come in for a day, go back out on it for a week. You might come in for two weeks, go out. So you don't have a set schedule. Um, when you're offshore, it's you're working 12 hours, seven days a week. Um, you're getting paid, working, eating, sleeping, you're still getting your, your pay and everything. Uh, over time, you know, everything over 40, you're getting your overtime pay. Uh, once you start diving, you're getting your depth pay. Um, it tends to be a little rough on relationships. So if you've got the husband or wife at home, the family, you miss birthdays, holidays, Christmas, that kind of thing. Right. So most of your divers, just like a lot of people who work offshore, um, it's about quality, not quantity. So they make the most of it when they have family time, right. you know, and then mom or dad's got to go to work, you know, so it's pretty much just a lifestyle. It takes some adjusting to get used to. Okay, okay. How dangerous is commercial diving? Um, I didn't use the word dangerous. Um, I've been around it uh, pretty much all my life. My dad and grandpa were both divers, um, so I've seen it. It's much, much safer than what it used to be. You know, back in the 70s, I saw pictures and my dad wearing a bathing suit, flip flops and sunglasses. You know, now hard hat, you know, you got your PPE, um, right. safety glasses, boots, all that good stuff. Um, so to me, there's risk involved, just like with any job. Um, and it's not so much uh, some people think, oh, your, your biggest factor is drowning. To me, it's more stuff like moving stuff, getting in pinch points, putting your fingers where they don't belong, that kind of stuff. So there is some risk involved, um, but safety is always a major factor for right. anybody working offshore. Okay, okay. Now, this is the big question everybody has. Uh, does it cut your life expectancy of the short? Yeah, so there's, um, uh, this is a myth that's been going around for a long time, and they say you can only be a diver for 10 years. Um, what I call it is dive expectancy, not life expectancy, because who's going to do a job that's going to cut your life short? Uh, so the way it works is divers typically go out, they make a bunch of money when they're younger, they're healthier and everything, and then they move up into lead diver, dive supervisor, project managers. So they kind of, they're not diving anymore, but they're still in the diving industry. Right. So it's not so much your life expectancy gets cut short, um, like I said, I call it your dive expectancy, but there are divers 
um, still out there working, you know, into their 60s, still getting in the water, still doing the hard work. So okay. it's basically, you know, how physically fit are you? Stay with it. You know, older, you don't move quite as fast, but you got the experience to get stuff done compared to the younger guy that moves faster. Right, right. Yeah, that's one of the biggest questions that I hear all the time. Right. Um, are sharks a problem? Um, there are sharks in the Gulf of Mexico. Everybody worries about sharks and what's going to get you. Um, you know, everything offshore is 24-7. So the way it works, if you come up in rotation at 2 o'clock in the morning and you go on the back of the boat and you look around and it's dark, you jump in the water. A lot of people go, well, that's when sharks come out to eat. Right. Sharks eat all the time. Um, I've never heard of a commercial diver being attacked by a shark. You know, you've got hoses and ropes and cables and you've got a hat on and a tank and noise and you're not food. You know, you don't look like a seal, like a surfer would right. or, you know, something like that. We don't have great whites swimming around in the Gulf attacking people. Mm -hmm. um, so the biggest risk is not so much marine life. It's more of, you know, having stuff, uh, you know, pinch fingers, getting mashed or, you know, something like that. But the marine life is really not a concern. You're so focused on what you're doing. You don't worry about that kind of thing. Do you even see the sharks out there? Yeah, you see them. Typically they'll come up. Um, don't bother you a whole lot. You know, they check you out and go on. If it's a big shark, you might want to keep an eye on it. But yeah. for the most part, you're have not you ever seen one personally? Yeah. 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 They, like I said, um, one of the things that takes getting used to, it's not so much the sharks, but barracuda, which big, long fish, big, ugly fish, big teeth, and they tend to hover around you. You know, they don't bite at you. They don't get in your way. They don't mess with you, that kind of thing. Right. So it takes a little getting used to. You're in their environment. But for the most part, you see some neat stuff. I've seen big sea turtles and, you know, all kind of cool stuff out there. But nothing that was, like, just scary that I don't want to be here kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. In addition to welding, uh, what, what else do underwater welders do? Yeah. Well, a lot of people, you know, they contact the school or they get here and they think, I'm going to be an underwater welder and that's all I'm going to do. And so the real world is you come here and you become a commercial diver, which means you do lots and lots of nuts and bolts type stuff, inspection, some underwater welding, lots of underwater burning, underwater cutting using the torch that you did, um, you know, in the burning video. So you don't do just do welding. Uh, actually, the welding is more of a small part jetting pipeline that has to be buried under. You got a hand jet, you know, that kind of thing, inspection. Um, possibly some NDT inspection work you'll have to do, um, installing anodes, that kind of thing. So the underwater welding is just one piece of what you do. So basically overall is your diving helmet is your transportation to get you to the work site, and then you're an underwater construction worker. Okay. Okay. So pretty much your job title is not an underwater welder, it's a commercial diver. You're a commercial diver who does underwater welding. Okay. And Pretty much anything else they need you to do. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Richard. That's all, right. all I have. Thanks a lot.